gentlemen, a, 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 a maverick figure, if you like, who, who like nothing better than to the pierce the, the pride of those who set themselves up above us. Dare I ask, what was it that drew you to, to, to William Hone? Yeah, funny that. And, you know, he was a, a sort of brilliant editor who had a sort of drunken cartoonist friend. Um, I, I, I can't imagine. It seemed out of our comfort zone. You must see something of, of yourselves in, um, in him. Well, we knew the world. Um, and, uh, but let's be honest, Hone was doing it for real. I mean, when he took the piss, he was facing transportation to the colonies or death. Um, you know, we're, we're risking the odd writ, but, um, slightly but, different. But right from the, from the get-go, when we sort of discovered the story, um, the, the fact that it was uh, Hone and a cartoonist um, working together to sort of uh, provide, uh, you know, create his defence, uh, was an appealing sort of uh, thing, because, you know, Ian and I have worked together for hundreds of years. Um, uh, working Since just before <laughs> Hone, actually. <laughs> We were pretty much contemporaries of him, um, but it, it, it's um, it's an interesting, uh, it's a very rich uh, world in which they they uh, wrote and and satirised the, the the government um, because it's just after the uh, the Battle of Waterloo. Um, the, there are very punitive taxes. There's a threat of um, re revolution in the air. Um, the government's terrified of you know it's it's just before the Peterloo massacre, and so um, Hone and his his uh, his uh, colleague um, George Cruikshank, who's one of the most brilliant, scabrous, acerbic cartoonists um, ever, um, they they together sort of pitched in and, and really tore the government and the Prince Regent um, apart. And so you've got the visual element, um, you know, Nick's cartoonist. Um, it is incredibly rich. I mean, the the way that period. A, satirised itself, but B, everything was enormous. The wigs were vast. <laughs> you know, everyone was hugely overweight, you know, <laughs> apart from people who were starving, and that was sort of the point. So there's a sort of, there's a sort of caricature nature to it, um, which, again, appealed to Nick. And, I mean, I just love the language. Hone wrote up his own trial. Um, he was put on trial by the government three times for blasphemy and sedition and libel in every form. Um, and uh, then he wrote it up afterwards. And you can imagine, he comes over incredibly well <laughs> in his own version. And that appealed. But I think I'm right to say he walks out of the court to, to cheering mobs. who there He's were, taken the, the public with him. Yeah, he, he became, for a very brief moment in history, um, a hugely celebrated figure. Um, the, the, the trials that took place in um, the Guildhall in London attracted a thousand people actually within the court and can you imagine it's sort of uh, a proper legal court but a thousand people um, and outside there were another 20,000 um, supporting him and just hanging on the, on the verdicts. And, I mean um, they genuinely thought the authorities this could go any way. I mean this is literally a powder keg which makes the trials, you know, there's, there's even more at stake than his own liberty. And this is about our right to laugh at authority. Yes. And I guess, how many years later, we'd like to think, well, of course we have that. You know, we live in a, a free society where we're free to laugh at what we like. But, Jess, do you, th do you think we are? Well, there's a moment in the play where Hone sort of addresses the, the jury and the audience um, and says, is laughter treason? Um, and... Um, in the play, he, um, the, our actor, brilliant actor, Joe Proen, um, sort of let, leaves it hanging. And it's amazing how many people, some one or two say yes, which is, <laughs> which is a, a bit surprising. But no, it, it, that's what it's all about. What, we, what are you allowed to laugh at? Um, you know, in, uh, to, it resonates very much with today. And um, uh, there are all kinds of subjects which are, are deemed to be taboo. Um, and, um, you know, in, in those days, it was really about the, the, the royal family. They were much worse about the royal family than we would ever be allowed to be today. Um, but the question still hangs in the air. I mean, if you ask Donald Trump, is laughing at the president treason? I would guess he would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he would think that. And there are members of the Conservative Party, I've just picked them at random, um, who would think that laughter, certainly about Brexit, is probably treasonable and we have daily newspapers that use the word treason about disagreeing um, with their own view so yes we won a lot of battles over press freedom and freedom of expression you know 200 years ago which we're grateful for but don't think they're finished I mean they're still current and we are very lucky you know around the world 
I mean, governments that don't like you say, now disagreeing with me is blasphemy. You know, Saudi Arabia, they put a law in this week, five years for going online and making jokes about the government because it's undermining religious values. I mean, this is, it's a tactic that mm. authority likes using, is saying, essentially, I'm God. Um, and if you disagree with me... It's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. Yeah, and it, interestingly, I mean, we, we all think, oh, blasphemy, that's a thing of the past here. Um, actually, we've just been up in Scotland, um, and uh, blasphemy is still uh, um, alive and kicking in, in Scotland. Um, we've got rid of it in England, but um, uh, it's called a dead law, and, but they can wheel it out if they wanted to. Um, it's still on the statute. It's still yeah. on the statute, but yeah, yeah. And around the world, blasphemy is used all the time to, to, um, uh, to subjugate um, free speech and um, attack female rights and um, uh, there's a brilliant cartoonist in Malaysia called Zunar uh, and he w has been attacked uh, by the government um, for his attacks on, on the government. Uh, his um, exhibitions have been torn down and burned, his pictures burnt and all that sort of thing. Um, and uh, I met him last year and he was um, being faced with, with 43 years in jail. Uh, to go back and f face exactly the same charges that William Hone did, seditious libel. Um, and everybody was saying, why are you going back? And this <laughs> is much the same sort of argument that Hone faced. He, he could have fled to America like William Cobbett did. And um, uh, Zunar said, no, I'm going to go back and I'm going to, to fight the government and I'm going to establish the precedent, exactly as Hone did. Well, uh, uh, earlier this year, the Malaysian Prime Minister Razak fell um, in elections, and um, uh, Zunar was asked, um, "Well, you know, how do you feel about that now? You don't face these uh, these charges," and he just said, um, "I'll miss him." <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is that bravery that's amazing, and you know, I mean, we're very lucky. You know, we're skulking about in Soho, producing Private Eye, um, and uh, we're not facing, you know, that level um, of uh, oppression, which we're very grateful for. But we do think that. You just have to be on your guard. Mm. Do you find, I mean, you have the kind of the authoritarian side. Are we also now facing another side, an almost self-appointed group, saying to us, no, you can't laugh at that. No, that's not funny. Almost post-humor society, if you like, where everything has to be taken at uh, face value. Is so that a real danger, do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I do, I do think it's very unhelpful. Um, people who, it's partly why the Regency period is so appealing, because the debate is so robust. Um, it, it's people telling each other what they think, rather than saying, um, I disagree with you, so therefore you should shut up or go to jail. I mean, I don't think that's hugely helpful. Arguments, I think, have to be won, um, not shut down. Um, and so I think it, it's, it's a, a dangerous period where you get people saying, well, I feel um, bad about this, so um, you must not challenge me. I, d I think that's very unhelpful. But, but it's also sort of a, a, a function of free speech that um, people can say, I demand the free speech to say, you can't say that. Yeah. And it's a very <laughs> odd sort of irony, but it's, um, you know, it's happening all the time. I think, have I got his view is now in its 29th year? Yes. It seems longer. <laughs> <laughs> the, fact that, the fact that it is still so popular with the public, does that yeah. indicate that you know, the British public does still like to laugh? Yes, at, and at those who set themselves up in authority. Yes, and I think the fact that um, uh, uh, Have I Got News For You is still going on television, Private Eye is still, um, you know, if I find some wood, <laughs> um, it's still um, going strong there, suggests that there is an appetite for criticism um, dressed up as humour. Um, and I think, I mean, it's a very long British tradition, which is partly why we're so grateful for it, um, and that... Um, our politicians, you know, I think it's important we vote for them and I think it's also important we laugh at them. Um, jointly, those are the two things that keep everyone honest and sane. I've been in a number of politicians' houses where they have either covers or cartoons <laughs> from Private Eye in them. Some of them at least clearly get the joke as well. Yes. It, it's one of the most frustrating things as a, as a cartoonist that politicians are incredibly thick-skinned and you want to wound, you <laughs> want them to change their minds and see the light. Uh, they never do. They're just flattered that they're, they're pilloried in any shape or form. One, Ian and I both um, worked for Spitting Image uh, in the early days. And um, one, there was one Tory MP um, who used to send in his own 
voice as a voice tape um, saying, please make a puppet of me, please make a puppet. And We uh, don't want to say who it is. I wish you would. <laughs> it was Jeffrey Archer. <laughs> 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 you would have that. <laughs> but that's, the, that's what you're dealing with with politicians. <laughs> they, they just, it's very annoying. That so you know you're somebody if you're on Spitting yeah. Image. Yeah. yeah. But I think the, the great joy is discovering people who say, you're not funny, you're childish, this, is, this isn't clever, it's not real satire. And at that moment you think, yep, yeah. that worked. Uh, I mean, the, the great thing about Hone's time and, and with Hone and Cruikshank, they produced uh, uh, both pamphlets and um, cartoons which really did offend the monarchy. Um, the images of the Prince Regent gallivanting with other people's wives and, um, uh, and there's a fabulous Gilray cartoon um, uh, which um, uh, shows the Prince Regent as this obese um, young man, um, but his flies are open and there are, there's um, a, 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 a chamber pot overflowing with audio in the background. Um, it's sort of the stuff that we wouldn't get away with today. Um, but, but the uh, royal reaction to that was they were so shocked by this, and it was their equivalent of spitting image, the, the, the cartoons which were, which were posted in Fleet Street on a daily basis. Um, the, the, uh, the Prince Regent would send people out to buy up all the prints to, to try and stifle the, 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 the debate and the, the... He wasn't terribly bright because he didn't realise that they would then print more <laughs> um, and, and the price would yes. go up. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's um, a royal precedent. <laughs> but, I mean, the great thing about it, I mean, Hone and, uh, produced the reformist register and what he wanted was reform. I mean, and, you know, Defoe, who's the first and greatest um, uh, British satirist, said the end of, of satire is reform. I mean, that's the point. Um, it wasn't revolution on the streets. Um, he and, on the whole, that tradition of laughing people into behaving better um, is not about revolution. Um, and it's not about blood. Mm. Um, and that also appeals. I mean, and the, 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 the basis of the trials was uh, Hone abandoned sort of um, traditional legal arguments and precedent by telling jokes and trying to and producing cartoons and other people's parodies and satires and to try and make the jury laugh. And, um, you know, he did, you know, by, by he, the, the accounts of the trials, a thousand people in the Guildhall were, laughed to the extent that the, the, the judge had to call in the sheriffs and say the next person who laughs will go to jail. And of jailed course, for laughter. jailed yeah. for laughter. And of course, the reaction, as in any situation, are like, you know, we can remember from school days when the, head, when the master says, if somebody else laughs, you're going to uh, get into detention. And everybody stands there just chewing the insides of their cheeks and trying not to laugh. And it, the, it exa exactly the same. But we read with this home. in the court report yeah. and we thought, the judge can't have been this stupid. <laughs> to tell, you know, a thousand British people not to laugh. What are they going to do? <laughs> they laughed. And then he said, he told the sheriffs they had to arrest anyone who was laughing. So they're running around saying, are you laughing? And everyone's going, oh, not me. <laughs> it was him. He was laughing. And then they all laughed at, at their own reaction to it. So it just degenerated into a farce, which is what Hone wanted. Clearly in, in private eye, a huge amount of laughter in private eye, but it, it has serious stories in it as well. Do you, after all so many years, do you still get the same buzz when you print something in Rotten Boroughs or, or whatever and you think, yeah, nailed you, got you there? Yeah, um, absolutely, or, or why do it? Um, I mean, I think sometimes readers get weary and they say, you just constantly write the same things and nothing gets any better. And I say, but just think how bad it would be if we didn't do it. <laughs> absolutely. And <laughs> something occurred to me when I was driving down here. The, the, looking back, the, the politicians that you lampooned years ago. Is there any sense in which you think they actually appear to be political giants compared to what we have now? Um, I think that's, mm, that's a, a bit question. nostalgic. Um, I think everyone thinks that um, they're political giants. But when I joined the I, um, it was full of older men saying, well, back in the old days, and we had, you know, James Tudor Reed and uh, <laughs> uh, these giants. Um, and I was thinking, who are these people? I've never heard of them. So I think, I think we tend to we tend to reminisce. I, th I think it, it, it is helpful to have um, shows like Spitting Image or, you know, or Have I Got News For You, which at least sort of bring po politicians into prominence. Um, you know, one of the problems I think today is that most of us probably couldn't name 
the entire cabinet, which probably in the days of Spitting Image you could because they were grotesque, blubbery, rubbery figures. And yeah, but I bet you the people in the cabinet don't even know if they're in the cabinet <laughs> now. I mean, they've only yeah, been they there a couple of weeks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I'm, defected. And when you look at Britain you know, this week with you know, arguments about returning jihadi wives, uh, yeah. Brexit, political parties actually sprinting, MPs leaving their parties, you must rub your hands with glee, <laughs> I would have thought. I mean, professionally, you know, obviously we're delighted. As human beings, you know, I mean, this is quite sad. Um, that uh, you get a news report saying up to three Conservative MPs have defected. And you're thinking, wow, three. Um, but anyway, it's a start. Um, so no, I'm, Nick and I are quite different. He's quite pessimistic. I'm quite optimistic. <laughs> I like the idea of, of change. I like the idea of trouble because I think something good might come out of it. Yeah. You're never going to be made redundant through... No one's ever going to say, well, there's nothing to saturate. No, well, it's, it's one of the great um, ironies of, of our job is that um, the worse things get, the better things get for us. <laughs> um, you know, the last few years with the arrival of Trump and uh, the imminent um, end of the world has been absolutely fantastic for, for, for satire. Um, people yes. keep saying satire is dead, and it really isn't. It's, um, no, and, and it is slightly embarrassing that the one industry that's done extremely well in the lead-up to Brexit is satire, um, <laughs> which, um, you know, we, we're slightly embarrassed by. Because you can't just satirise everything, can you? I mean, it has to be something worthy in yeah. a negative way of, of being satirised, and there doesn't seem to be any shortage of that. No, not really. Um, I mean, I would say, I mean... If you were cynical, that means you see the value in nothing and then everything's a target. If you're a satirist, you're trying to find the targets that are worthy of, of having a go at. And what do you hope people will take away when they come to see the play? What do you think you hope they will Ooh, take with them? I hope they'll be inspired and uplifted. And um, if there's anybody out there who thinks, oh, it's quite good to blow um, a, a raspberry at authority, they will do that. And, <laughs> uh, you know, um, holding our, our um, masters to account is what it's all about. And, uh, you know, that's what Hone is fighting for. And I think if you can get that message across, that's a good thing to do. Um, it's good for democracy and... Um, and an Go open um, ability to criticise um, doesn't mean the end of the world. You don't have to be frightened by it. Um, what is much more frightening um, is, if you look around the rest of the world, is, is despotism, is, is rulers who say, we don't have any dissent in our country um, because I say so. And in the same way that perhaps just finally, the same way that we have Dickens and Defoe and other writers from the 19th century who are... Household names. Mm. Should Hone be one of those, do you think? It's, it's a complete mystery to us why he's vanished from the history books. Um, uh, he, for, for this brief period of about a year um, after his trial in 1817, he was a national celebrity. They were um, uh, writing songs about him. They went out onto the streets mm. and wrote this amazing song called the, sang this song called the Big Wig Song, and, uh, which features in our play. And, it's, uh, and they were... Um, the Hone himself um, to wrote said, "For a while, um, I was uh, I was much loved, and um, but he just sort of vanished into the the ether, really." I mean, history does this; um, it just forgets you. <laughs> <laughs> Coming for us all. <laughs> Maybe in 150 years' time, somebody will write a play about private. <laughs> yeah. I can't, can't wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I could sit here and, and ask you questions all afternoon, but I know we have other things to do. So thank you both. Well, thank you. Well, thank, thank you very much. much.